When gardeners think of composting, they usually imagine a virtuous cycle of turning kitchen waste into rich, dark humus that fuels healthy plants. And you know, that's mostly true. Scraps like banana peels, veggie trimmings, coffee grounds, and even shredded paper all feed the soil life beneath our feet. But what if some of the natural kitchen waste you're throwing into the compost is actually sabotaging your soil? What if it's doing more harm than good, killing off microbes, attracting pests, and turning your compost pile into a stinky, useless mess? Today, we're zeroing in on one of the biggest composting mistakes gardeners make, adding meat, bones, and greasy leftovers. At first glance, it might seem harmless. After all, meat is organic. It breaks down, just like any other food scrap, right? Not exactly. Meat and bones decompose much slower than plant matter. And during that slow breakdown, they release odors that are not only unbearable but also irresistible to pests. Think raccoons, rats, maggots, and flies. But that's not even the worst part. As meat rots, it becomes a breeding ground for harmful bacteria like Salmonella, E. coli, and Listeria. When these pathogens infiltrate your compost, they can linger, even after the compost is finished, and pose a real risk to your garden and your health. Bones aren't much better. While they don't rot as fast as flesh, they linger in your compost pile, resisting decay and becoming physical obstructions in the process. Most backyard compost piles don't reach the high internal temperatures needed to properly break bones down or neutralize any pathogens they may carry. Instead of nourishing your soil, bones sit there as slow, smelly, and stubborn remnants that you'll likely dig up intact months later. Now let's talk about dairy. Milk, cheese, yogurt, sour cream. It might surprise you to know these are composting no-gos for most home systems. Like meat, dairy spoils quickly. When it does, it produces a strong rancid odor that draws the worst kind of attention. Insects, rodents, and disease. But there's another layer of trouble. As dairy breaks down, it creates an anaerobic environment, meaning it suffocates the oxygen-loving microbes that keep your compost pile thriving. Those microbes are the real engines of decomposition. Kill them off, and you're left with a soggy, compacted mess instead of a healthy, crumbly compost ready to revitalize your soil. Let's not forget oils and fats. That half-finished salad with dressing, the bacon grease you poured off the pan, the oily pizza box. These kinds of greasy waste are among the worst offenders in a compost pile. Fats coat other materials and prevent air from circulating creating cold pockets where aerobic decomposition just can't happen. In these low oxygen zones, anaerobic bacteria take over. And while decomposition still occurs, it smells terrible creates slimy textures and fails to support soil-building organisms like earthworms or beneficial fungi. Instead of building a diverse, active soil food web, you're actually fostering rot and imbalance. The real danger behind all these ingredients is, well, pretty subtle. They don't just ruin the compost pile, they destroy microbial life that is critical to soil health. Soil microbes are sensitive to chemical signals, oxygen levels, and biological contaminants. When your compost becomes acidic, greasy, or full of rotting proteins, the beneficial microbes either die off or go dormant. That microbial imbalance, well, it actually carries over into your garden when you spread the compost. Rather than feeding your plants, you risk spreading disease, attracting pests to your soil, and interfering with nutrient uptake. Some gardeners assume moldy bread or expired leftovers are fair game, but even these require caution. Mold isn't always the type of fungus you want in your garden. While white fuzzy decomposers might be harmless, black mold or orange rust growths can introduce undesirable pathogens and imbalance fungal populations in your soil. Most backyard compost piles just don't get hot enough to neutralize every type of mold. And you know, if you're mixing in sugary or greasy baked goods, you're basically inviting even more fermentation problems, flies, and well, some unwelcome microbial competition. So what should you do instead? 
Well, if you have meat, dairy, or oily scraps, honestly, the safest option is to dispose of them through regular waste systems, or feed them to pets or livestock if it's safe and appropriate. For gardeners who are, let's say, highly experienced specialized systems like bokashi composting or hot thermophilic composting can actually process these types of waste. However, these systems require controlled temperatures, sealed containers, and very specific microbial starters to work properly. And honestly, most gardeners just aren't set up for that level of precision. Alternatively, consider vermicomposting, but uh, be careful. Worms really thrive on plant matter and soft kitchen scraps. Meat and dairy, however, can cause a worm bin to go anaerobic pretty quickly, killing off your worm colony. Only introduce advanced materials into worm bins if you've built up experience and have excellent moisture and air control. What it all comes down to is this. Your compost is alive. It's not just a dumping ground. It's a living ecosystem where every ingredient you add either builds up microbial activity or breaks it down. Choosing the right inputs, clean, plant-based, non-greasy, and microbe-friendly, makes all the difference. You can grow incredible food and flowers using compost, but only if that compost is clean, balanced, and brimming with life. If you've been wondering why your compost smells off, why your garden hasn't improved despite adding so-called homemade humus, or why pests keep showing up uninvited, it might be time to, you know, take a closer look at what you're putting in. Compost is a powerful tool, but only if it's done right. For a thriving, pest-free, and microbe-rich compost pile, stick to what the soil life loves. Skip the meat, dairy, oils, and greasy leftovers. Instead, focus on fruit and veggie scraps, yard trimmings, coffee grounds, shredded paper, and leaves. Your compost will heat up faster, smell better, and most importantly feed your garden with life, not rot. If you found this guide helpful, or learn something new, don't forget to subscribe and share it with your fellow gardeners. At Hydro Haven, we're here to help you grow smarter, build better soil, and turn every scrap into success, one pile at a time.